Happy Tuesday. Thanks for being with us on, uh, on this second day of this week. Thanks for tuning in. We are continuing our series on the Sermon on the Mount, and we're in that interesting passage at the beginning of chapter 6 where Jesus says, when you give. Now notice Jesus, Jesus didn't say if you give, but when you give. When you give, this is the way you do it. You do it in secret so that your Father in heaven will reward you. You do it so secretly that your one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Uh, you do it in a way, one, that doesn't embarrass the person who's receiving the gift. Uh, if the Lord lays it on your heart to help a person, then you, want, you don't want to do it in a way that takes away their humanity, but you want to encourage them and build, build them up. Now, let, let, let's talk about giving. There, there are a couple of biblical principles about finances. One uh, is uh, make all you can. Uh, there is no biblical teaching that poverty is good. It has never seen that way. Uh, make a good living. Make the money you need to make. And if God blesses you to be successful, then be as successful as you possibly can be, knowing that God gives you that kind of increase so that you can be a blessing to others, that you're going to be the channel through which the blessing is flowing. It's not all for you, uh, but uh, make all you can and, and celebrate the victories that God gives you in your, in, in your areas of finance. Second, uh, save all that you can. Uh, live very, very simply. Uh, if you're like me, you're, you're finding out a lot of things about yourself in this time of quarantine that, mm, well, is not as sharp as you'd like, to, like for them to be. Such as, you know, a lot of stuff I spend money on I don't need. Uh, a lot of stuff that I spend money on I, I, I really don't want. I, I, I made some decisions a bunch of years ago about this subscription or that uh, whatever, and now I'm paying for it every month, and we've been cleaning out our budget and, and killing subscriptions and that kind of stuff. Why? It just is no longer helpful to us anymore. I, I don't know that I need 300 television uh, channels, especially when 299 of them are playing stuff I don't want to watch. Uh, so the, you can live a lot more frugally than, uh, than the world tells you you should or you want to, and that will free up resources uh, to give all that you can. The, the tithe is never a, a, a final uh, law of giving. Okay, uh, we, get, we get the tithe from the time that Abraham was uh, victorious in battle and comes uh, to celebrate the victory and he gives a tenth of everything that he's won in that battle uh, back to the Lord in celebration. Uh, that's where it comes from. And that is kind of the model, is that a celebration of what God is doing that, that we bring the tithe. Um, the early church would have taught the tithe kind of thing. 10% uh, comes to the church to fund the missions and ministries of, of the congregation. Uh, but that's just where it starts. Uh, you may have particular people that the Lord lays on your heart that you just want to support. Uh, maybe you have friends in certain ministries and they count on your support. Maybe you have somebody who is in college who needs your help. Uh, if somebody is in the poverty cycle, it is too hard for them to break it by themselves. Uh, my dad broke the poverty cycle in our family because my dad left home, joined the Air Force, and started uh, Raymar TV and Appliance. We were able to have uh, what we had uh, monetarily, and that, that paid for my college and paid for my seminary, and I never had to worry about any of that. But my dad paid for that. My dad physically paid the cost of breaking the poverty cycle in our family. You know and I know that there are brothers and sisters in the Nashville area who are caught in that poverty cycle who for no, no fault of their own uh, don't have a chance. Um, schools they went to, the parents they had, on and on and on. And maybe the Lord will lead you to then help that person to break that poverty cycle so that they can live in the freedom that Christ has called them to live in and they can be who Christ has called them to be. But you do it in a way so that they thank God when you give to them. So that you are the answered prayer. Now you think about that. When somebody is praying that they need help, that they don't know how God's gonna work this out, 
and you step up and say, hey, I'd like to do this, they will view that not as your generosity, but as a faithfulness of God. And that's the story you want to be part of, isn't it? You will become the answer to the prayer. When you do these things privately, when you're generous, but you do it in a way that becomes the answer to prayer, then God will reward you publicly. But we start by doing it inwardly. So, here's your 60 seconds. What next step of generosity is Christ calling you to? Ponder on that, and I'll see you tomorrow.